Good afternoon. Welcome to Senate Education, Thursday, March 2nd, 418 in the afternoon. Of course, uh, you're following legislative work. We've been delayed uh, by a long floor debate. So what I want to do is just touch base and, and sort of do some air traffic control updates, where things are, where they're going. Uh, we will have to meet, of course, tomorrow afternoon for a while since we've missed everything today. We will postpone some things until we get back, but I do want to keep us focused on uh, moving voting on school construction tomorrow, uh, uh, hopefully just a wrap, hopefully wrapping up, getting close to voting miscellaneous ed, and getting close as possible to also moving our uh, school safety bill. We also owe our friends in health and welfare pre-K study language, which again, uh, we didn't get to today, but we do have various parties meeting outside of the building and they will bring forward language tomorrow. So with that, we do have 10 minutes before uh, Ms. Barbic has to, uh, can no longer be with us, uh, but we do have her for a few moments and I want to be able to, uh, return to and just get some some general comments Dee, thanks for joining us we know you're you're going to be joining us again i believe tomorrow i don't uh i haven't seen a schedule for tomorrow so i'm not aware of that but uh, i can be all right well tell us uh you've seen now a new draft based on hold on one second let me just think about this how i want to do this uh Hayden, is Beth with us tomorrow on things? Is, can you just check her availability? On a variety of things, she is. She is, okay, so she will be around. Dee, you know, I don't want to, to confuse any issues right now, but I, I would appreciate any overall comments or thoughts you might have. You know, I don't want to go back to line by line sorts of things with 10 minutes, just doesn't feel right uh, to the process, but if you could just give us some Oh, some kind of an overview of the direction we're moving in based on yesterday's discussion. And then we'll hear from Dan and hopefully uh, Secretary French and hopefully you again tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I've been looking at draft 6.1, which was posted earlier today. And I did have um, just two small changes. Um, Page two, line three. Uh, one second, uh, let's all get a, our copies. Uh, they are in our folders. And there we go. Draft 6.1, okay, what page? Uh, page two. Yep. Line three, uh, just about halfway or a little bit further down where um, after options-based response drills, um, I'd like to insert and fire drills in there at each school site in the fall. I just want to be crystal clear that we aren't eliminating uh, fire drills. Right. So I just want to be clear that, so I want wanted to address that there and it's the same thing, same page, but line 18, about two thirds of the way down, same wording, just insert and fire drills in there. You know, I remember, I thought we had already addressed fire drills, but maybe we missed it in those those sections. Maybe we did it in another section. Um, I remember we had the discussion about it, and I I just feel like there we need to be clear as I read it. I'm trying to look at it from the perspective of just the average person reading this. It appears to me at face value that we only have to do options based, not fire drills. So I just want to be really clear that we aren't eliminating the fire drills as part of the requirements. Um, it does, this, the language now does refer to um, the guidance provided by the Vermont School Safety Center and the crisis planning team. And that guidance does indicate what months of the school year various drills have to be conducted. But I just feel like it would be very clear if we added in fire drills in the language. I'm not seeing any objection from the committee. Okay, we'll do that. Um, so in terms of um, language, those were just the two small changes that I, I wanted to recommend. Um, and then um, 
on some of the testimony yesterday and the day before, I think it was the day before, um, I just wanted to, to clarify, and I think uh, Greg Marino did a great job with his um, testimony. I listened to it late last night. And uh, I just wanted to clarify a couple things. Um, one is that the behavioral threat assessment team and the, and the school crisis planning team are two separate teams in his school, um, in his district. And one, they do two different things. So I just wanted to clarify that um, so there wasn't any confusion that the planning team doesn't do threat assessments, nor does the threat assessment team do the work that the planning team does. Um, and then- So on uh, that, is there anything in 6.1 that concerns you based on that distinction that you just made? No, I just wanted to, to clarify. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you for that. And um, I also wanted to um, clarify too that in the language under the um, behavioral threat assessment teams where we identify those individuals that need to be part of the team and law enforcement is one of those individuals. Um, I just wanted to clarify that that is just on the threat assessment team. It's not um, creating like school resource officers or that police officers will be in the school on a regular basis. It's just that they would be part of the team if um, an assessment indicates that there is some criminality in the behavior. So if, for example, the Jack Sawyer case from 2018 or 2017, 2018, um, that would be an example where you would want law enforcement to be involved in that threat assessment. But on the other hand, if you had um, an assessment that involved a student who was threatening self-harm, there is no, you know, just given that basic, there wouldn't be any reason for law enforcement to be involved in that particular assessment. So again, I just wanted to clarify that it, this isn't um, introducing like SROs in every school or that there's a constant presence of police in the schools. It's just that when necessary, um, if, a, there is some criminal element in a behavior or action that they are there to consult with on that. So as it's written now uh, in the bill, it is a member of law enforcement is there no matter what. Are you saying that sometimes that person may be brought in, sometimes that person may not be brought in? Correct. So if, you know, if there isn't a criminal element in the, in this, the threat, um, you know, and I use the example of self-harm, very often there isn't a criminal element to that. So there wouldn't be a need to have law enforcement on that particular threat assessment in that particular instance. Um, and then the last thing is I put uh, a couple of, or I provided a couple of documents to Hayden to post uh, in the, the documents folder. And one of them is the guidance that is provided to uh, Vermont schools in conducting threat assessments and is part of some documentation that's provided through the training they receive through Ontix. Um, so I, I post, had, I asked Hayden to post that so you could refer to it and, and see basically what the guidance is for doing the threat assessments. And again, I think Greg did a fantastic job yesterday really outlining that process. Um, and then there's another document that I provided that I um, shows the difference between MDRs and threat assessments and explains both and does some parallels to how, how they are different from one another, and they are two very different processes. Yes, and we have those documents in our packet. Uh, thank you, and thank you for providing them uh, to Hayden. Uh, Senator Weeks was mentioning language. Uh, we already have the language. I'll let Senator Weeks ask his question. Because I so, think we have so um, uh, D, you mentioned that uh, law enforcement wouldn't necessarily be involved in all the threat assessment teams. Just wondering if it's appropriate if you could introduce a sentence that modifies the current language to make that clear. So uh, just to clarify, not that they wouldn't need to be part of the teams, that they wouldn't be part of every single threat assessment. 
So, so in other words, they'd be a part of the, the team when necessary, if there's a criminal element in, in the threat. Right. So, right. So right now, if you look at version 6.1 on page four, line 17, uh, it talks about uh, administrators, mental health professionals, school counselor, a nurse, and local law enforcement officials. So you're saying, so there's no change to that. They, you're saying that they are going to be uh, part of the team, but they may not be always needed. Correct, and uh, the same may be true, for instance, for a school nurse. We think it's important to have them as um, somebody who's a core member of the team, but it, there may be a threat assessment where the nurse is not necessarily needed in that assessment, but we want to have the ability to have them be part of it if needed. Well, again, just for clarity, I, I, I agree with everything you're saying. I, I get it. It's just that, uh, so when it says, then, uh, page four, line 16, when it says composed of at a minimum, uh, when, it, when, the, when the flare goes up and everybody, they call for the threat assessment team, all these people are going to come unless we allow, so again, because at a minimum, unless we allow some flexibility that there be an optional claw, you know, something that says, such such members are optional based on circumstances or words to that effect. I'm I'm just trying to draw out of you, you know, a modification to that sentence that allows us that you're happy with, that allows us to move forward. That, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, and I'll just clarify that. I do think having heard some of the testimony yesterday and hearing committee members' uh, questions and comments. I, I think if we could get in there something along the lines of, and I, and I think largely the concern might be the law enforcement officials, if needed, when needed, or recognizing a, a line in there saying, recognizing that all of these individuals will not be part of every meeting, you know, s some kind of flexibility there, I think would be important for the committee to consider. Um, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I, this, the wording is exactly out of the, the training and the, and the guidance the, that we received through ONTICS and best practices. So these are the core members as identified in best practices. Okay, Senator Williams. Just, uh, please. Thank you. Uh, as long as the police officers know that they're part of the team and they're involved in any drills or training because they don't know they're part of the team, they won't show up. If right. They, if they're yeah. yeah. And yeah, and it does stipulate in terms of the training that all of the members of the team uh, have to be trained annually. So that would obviously include the, the law enforcement as well. Uh, I'm sorry, Senator Gula. See your hand there. Yeah. We had talked about making bias training part of the recurrent training. Is that, are we still thinking about putting that in? And um, D, I'm wondering what, what you would think about that. Um, I mean, I'm not opposed to it. Um, you know, I would run it certainly by Secretary French, but I, I'm, I'm not opposed to adding bias training as, as part of it. Um, yeah. I, yes, I'm glad. Again, I, I would run it by, you know, Secretary French, um, you know, b b before going on record that, yeah, well, let's go ahead and do that. I just, I do want to confer with him, but um, I don't, I don't see it from my perspective as being an issue. Thank you, Senator Gulick. I'm really glad you remembered that. And I thought we had directed Ledge Council to put that in there. I too don't see it in there right now. Uh, but we will. I will loop back to her in an email and copy you and ask her to include that. I think the um, Mr. Chair. I, I think I know what you're referring to. And if I recall, it's the wording that was added related to. Um, see if I can find it to the training. Um, I 
sorry, it's going to take me a minute to find it. Um, Yeah, there was there was something about wording, and of course now I can't find it. But it was added. But I it it wasn't um, uh, what Senator Gulick was referring to. It was um, it was a, a different. Um, the wording was different. Well, feel free to uh, bring that back to us tomorrow. Okay. Um, it's on page two, and I think it was related to the trauma-informed best practices. And that was added. I that may, I'm thinking that may maybe what you were recalling. And that was something that superintendents and principals, I think, asked to be inserted. So on page two, um, line eight. eight. But that does not, I don't, unless, are you referring to Senator Gula's question about uh, bias training? No, I, no. I think what, um, I, I, when you had said, you thought that there may have been some, some wording discussion about that in the past, I was thinking that you were referring to the trauma-informed best practices, which was a recommendation that the superintendents and right. principals had recommended. We did put that in, but not the um, uh, uh, bias training was not anything I recall um, seeing in any of the drafts. Right. So we will ask Ledge Council to add that, and she's going to take us through a new version tomorrow. Anything else from you at this point, Dave? We really appreciate you being with us. We know you're also running late to another appointment. Uh, no, I'm all set. And I will just uh, look at the, the schedule for tomorrow and assume I'm back at some point um, to see you then. Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your time. Thank you. Committee, anything else for today? OK. Then we will see everybody tomorrow at 1. We're probably going to lose uh, Aiden tomorrow at around 3, but we will keep going until, we're just, until we've got everything uh, sort of uh, cleaned up and organized. Yes, Senator Gulick. Do you foresee the floor being long tomorrow? Like it was I, today? I don't, uh, personally, because we're starting at 1130. And I think things are sort of in pretty good shape. So, but I'm guessing we get off the floor in an hour, 12.30, latest, my gut. And then if we could get in here, what time are we getting in here? One o'clock. One o'clock. So maybe we eat our lunches in mm -hmm. here and just start to vote and finalize and get ready for uh, our week off and uh, really get everything tidy. I'll check with the pro tem also, Senator Bulick, about that and let Hayden know if, if he says otherwise in terms of length of time and he can send something out to the committee. Anything else? Mr. Ross, we good? Yep. Okay. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.